Hello, here I'm going to take you from the patient all the way to the microscopy. So imagine a clinical scenario of a patient presenting with what appears to be a solitary thyroid nodule. Uh, you examine the nodule, it is about 4 to 5 centimeters in diameter, and then the surgeon uh, decides that it requires surgery partly because of its size and also partly because it's causing some compressive symptoms. So revise on the symptoms that these uh, thyroid enlargements can cause. So now this one is taken out. And um, when we look at the specimen that is received in the pathology lab, uh, we are actually uh, immediately able to see that this is a very well circumscribed, encapsulated, rounded nodule. And this is the rest of the thyroid here. And now this uh, nodule has a sort of orange tan cut surface. There are some focal areas here of hemorrhage. And these whitish areas probably represent uh, areas of fibrosis or just reactive changes. So whenever we are faced with a solitary thyroid nodule, we are always concerned about neoplasms, which can be benign, such as a follicular adenoma or Hertel cell adenoma, or malignant, such as a follicular carcinoma. Of course, there are other malignancies like papillary thyroid carcinoma and medullary thyroid carcinoma as well. So let's take a look at the histology. Here we have a low power magnification view of this very rounded nodule and um, there is this pink area just immediately um, sort of covering it. This is the, nod the capsule of the nodule which I will show you in a higher power view. You can see here that it is made of fibrous tissue so this is a fibrous capsule and grossly it will usually appear whitish. Now if we move to the outside, um, we can see here that there are some follicular structures. So this is the residual, um, normal or uninvolved thyroid parenchyma, composed of follicles that are lined by very flat, uh, bland follicular cells. Now let's move back to the area in question. So first of all, it is very striking that this nodule is extremely different from the surrounding thyroid. This is one feature that favours a neoplasm. So why is it so different? Well, um, if you look at it, the colour at low power appears kind of a little bit denser. And this is because the follicles are a lot smaller, therefore there's a lot more packing of the cells. Let's take a closer look. If we zoom in, we can see that many of the follicles here are actually extremely small. Now, when these follicles are so much smaller than the normal sized thyroid follicles, we call them micro follicles. At the same time, you can see that they are admixed with extremely large follicles. These are called macro follicles. So there is a mixture of micro as well as macro follicles, but I would say overall the predominance is that of micro follicles. So micro follicular predominance is another feature that favours a neoplasm. So now that we've decided that this is neoplastic, now we have to decide whether this is a follicular adenoma, which is benign, which is completely encapsulated, or is this a follicular carcinoma where we should be seeing either capsular invasion or vascular invasion? We look for the vessels within the capsule usually or just outside the capsule. So let's take it one by one and let's have a look at the capsule very carefully. So here is the fibrous capsule. I'm going to just trace it as we go through. And we can see that it is intact and there's no areas that are poking out or invading into the capsule. Here is a vessel within the capsule. If this were a follicular carcinoma, we may see tumour sitting inside this vascular space, but we don't see it here. So again, as we follow, the capsule appears to be nice and intact and there are no areas of capsular invasion. Here we have another vascular space, but there's no evidence of vascular invasion. So if the entire capsule that we have sampled um, in all the areas that we examine of this nodule is the same as this, in other words, there's no capsular invasion and there's no vascular invasion, the diagnosis is therefore a follicular adenoma. And this is a benign neoplasm, so a hemithyroidectomy or lobectomy is sufficient treatment.